okay so uh, welcome back everybody and uh, we have two sessions in the afternoon so i would at least like to cover some uh, you know the things that we want to sort of apply in the hands on session so let's so we were uh, trying to see how to convert an ltl formula phi to a non deterministic booty automata uh, okay and uh, what we saw last time or you know in the session before lunch is that uh, if we take our uh, formula for the arbiter that we had used this was x1 implies one should be y1 and x2 implies one should be y2 and probably not y1 y2 so we we realized that uh, you know each of these parts corresponds to a certain automaton in fact these automata were quite simple in this case uh so they were mostly like this and i'm not putting the labels on the edges uh, we have seen that we have discussed that in detail before lunch but they look something like this and similarly this one will also look similar because it's basically the same thing but uh the roles of x1 and x2 are interchanged and similarly for y1 and y2 and this automaton was even simpler uh, this had a structure like this and if you recall from the discussion uh, before lunch session each of these automata were actually deterministic so they were deterministic uh, bookie automata for the example that we were considering right i mean we had exactly you know from this state if some combination of inputs comes we go there otherwise we go here and similarly here and here as long as one of y1 and y2 are zero we stay here otherwise we go there now uh, we may not get so lucky always and uh, in general uh, you know from uh ltl formula we may not be able to get a deterministic bookie automata we can always get a bookie automata but it it may be non deterministic and uh here is a very simple uh you know formula which uh which does not admit a deterministic bookie automata but of course admits a very simple non deterministic bookie automata so this is uh you know just as a side note uh so consider the formula that uh, which says that something happens finitely many times so uh, so so let us say i have an infinite run and let's say x1 becomes true infinitely many times so i don't know at what points x1 becomes true but let's say it becomes true infinitely many times so then what i can say is that no matter where you are standing in this timeline so at every point in this timeline you will be able to see a future point where x1 holds true right? if x1 really holds true infinitely often along this line then it doesn't matter where you stand on this timeline you will always be able to see a x1 in your future so this ltl formula says that x1 happens infinitely many times and the negation of this would say that x1 happens finitely many times and so if you do negation of uh, gf x1 so this uh, you will see that uh, you know this eventually becomes fg negation x1 and this is kind of easy to see this is saying eventually i'll reach a point after which everything is negation x1 So eventually, I see G negation x one, which means eventually I reach a point from where everything henceforth is negation x one. So therefore, 
since I'm going to reach this point after some finite number of steps, therefore x1 could have only occurred finitely many times. So, uh, so you know, to express something happens infinitely many times or something happens finitely many times is fairly straightforward in LTL. But an automaton that accepts this uh, is something like this. So we want to say that it. Uh, the, the sequence is only finitely many x ones. So beyond a certain point, we don't expect to see any more x ones. So at that point, so as long as we have x one or negation x one, we can keep moving around this. But beyond a certain point, when I see negation x one, I expect to see only negation and so on after that and this is my final state. Right? So do you see what this automaton is doing? It's a non-deterministic automaton. Clearly from this state there are two transitions on negation x1. But what this automaton is doing is it's saying that uh, you know what are the strings or what are the infinite sequences that it will accept those are precisely the infinite sequences which visit this final state infinitely often, but it means that at some point you'll have to move on negation x1 and after that you will only have negation x1, right? Because this one doesn't have a move on x1. So this automaton is uh, non-deterministic clearly and it turns out that uh, there is no deterministic bouquet automaton uh, that recognizes the same sequence which has finitely many x1s. Okay? So this can clearly be expressed using LTL. It can be expressed using a non-deterministic bouquet automaton, but uh, one can show that, uh, I mean, it can be proven that there is no deterministic bouquet automaton that can uh, express the same language, that can express the same infinite sequences. So non-deterministic bouquet automata are strictly more powerful uh, right, and non-deterministic bouquet automata are strictly more powerful than deterministic bouquet automata. Right, and uh, in terms of the kind of languages that they can express, in our example, we were fortunate enough that we got a deterministic bouquet automata in all of the cases. We may not get so fortunate in general, and we may have some of these as non-deterministic bouquet automata. For example, if whatever we have written here was one of the formulas, then we would have no other option but to get a non-deterministic bouquet automata. But that is okay. Uh, we, uh, you know, our step was to convert an LTL formula phi into a non-deterministic bouquet automata, and then we were going to convert it to uh, a deterministic parity automata. So it's a deterministic automaton, but it's a different acceptance condition. But let's uh, quickly go through, uh, you know, the point that we uh, discussed just before lunch, saying that, okay, now that I have these three automata, call them A1, A2, A3, uh, I would like to intersect them. I would like to find one automaton, which accepts those infinite sequences that are accepted by each of these three automata, right? Because then that will exactly represent the infinite sequences that are accepted by this formula, which is the conjunction of the three formula. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to discuss, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just uh, you know, mention, I mean, this is an easy construction, how to construct an intersection automata given such maybe three different automata or n different automata, okay, non-deterministic bouquet automata. So uh, I'm sure that you remember that for when you're talking about finite automata on finite words, right? This is the usual stuff that we study in our uh, BTEC curriculum, uh, finite state automata on finite words. So there, uh, you know, if we have automata A1 and automata A2 and automata A3, let us say, as in our case, and we want to find their intersection of their languages, what we do is we take a cross product of their states, right? So basically, we build an automaton where each state has three components, 
one which comes from uh, a1 one which comes from a2 and one which comes from a3 and then we basically simultaneously track the movements in the three automata so wherever in a1 q goes to maybe it goes to r and wherever in a2 q goes to uh, r this is r a2 this is r a3 on a given symbol we sort of built this transition right so each of our states is a triple of states one from each automaton and then we join them by uh, transitions labeled with symbols if in the first automaton i was moving from this state to this state in the second automaton on the same symbol i was moving from this state to this state and similarly for the third automaton and then we build this entire product automaton and we say that the initial state of this product automaton is the product of their initial states right so if s1 is the initial state of this s2 is the initial state of this s3 is the initial state of this we will say s1 s2 s3 are uh, is the initial state of this product automaton and when we are talking about finite words we say that the final state of this product automaton are the states which have a final state from each one of them right so f1 f2 f3 so there's a final state of the first automaton there's a final state of the second there's a final state of the third we call this a final state of the product automaton so this is what happens in uh, when we talk about automaton finite words now for automaton infinite words i mean this th this part of the construction is uh, is still quite meaningful saying that i'm basically running all the three automata in parallel so i'm keeping track of where their what states they are how their states are changing on a given symbol and so on the initial state part is also fine i'm starting in each of the three initial states kind of in parallel but this final state part is a bit problematic because unlike in a uh, automaton with uh, on, on finite words we say that you know a word is in the intersection of these three automata if it reaches a final state here and the same word brings it to a final state here and the same word brings it to a final state here so in some sense you're going to reach the final states together so therefore we can search for such triples and call them the final states of the product automata when you are talking about finite words so this works for finite words but when you are talking about infinite words there is a little problem because you know now i am looking for an infinite uh, sequence or an infinite word which is accepted by this and also this and also this now what does it mean to say that it is accepted by this it means it hits its final state infinitely often it is accepted by this so it hits its in final state also infinitely often and similarly it causes this also to hit its final state infinitely often but it is perfectly possible that when this is hitting its final so you know i mean for example we could have uh, you know the three automata running like this a1 a2 a3 and this is a non final state and this is a non final state and this is a final state and then this becomes final state this becomes a non final state this becomes a non final state and then uh, maybe this becomes a non final state and this becomes final state and this becomes a non final state and again uh, maybe this is a non final state non final state final state so you see that each of these automata are actually going to keep hitting their final states right i mean again i may have final non final non final and again non final final non final so each of these automata are hitting their final states and they may continue to hit this infinitely often but at no point of time are all of the three simultaneously hitting their final states you see that at no point of time all of them are simultaneously hitting their final states but each one of them looked at individually could be hitting its final state infinitely often that's because the way we have defined the acceptance criterion we have just said that it must be hitting something infinitely often uh, without specifying at what position it must be hitting so this this could be hitting its final state infinitely often like this whereas this could be hitting its final state infinitely often like this and this like this and so there is no no point of time where all the three are hitting their final state infinitely often and yet 
you know, the word that causes these three automata to run like this is accepted by each one of the three, right? So let's say this was a word sigma that caused A1 to run like this, A2 to run like this, A3 to run like this. So sigma is accepted by each of A1, A2, A3. It's in each of these individual languages. So it's there in the intersection language. But if you take this product construction and work, you will realize that at no point of time can you see all the three final states together. Okay. So this is not going to work, this construction that saying the final states are those where each of the automata has uh, reached its final state. That is not going to work when we're talking about bookie acceptance condition, infinite words which are hitting some final state infinitely often. So how do we do this? So there's a very simple trick to do this, which is that we do the same product construction, except that we add one more component to it and this component you know if there are three automata like this this will be a set called one two three okay so what we do is we initially so all our states will have you know maybe we'll start with the initial state being one and in general each of these states will now have some component i and some component i prime where each of i and i prime are between one are uh, from the set one, two, and three. Okay. So how do we draw these transitions? These are just like earlier that we are tracking each of the individual automata separately, except that, uh, you know, this number here, we just copy this number here. If so, so this number actually represents the automaton that we are currently looking for, uh, you know, whether it has hit a final state. So we are tracking all the three automata parallelly, but there is one among these three automata that we are uh, paying attention to as far as whether it is hitting its final state. So, you know, for example, this, this could be, let's say, automata one. So, of course, I'm tracking in parallel where each of the individual automata are going, but this is saying that I should also try to ask or also try to check whether automata one hit a final state. So, which means the tenor keep one itself so essentially you know what we are doing is we are tracking the three automata in parallel and we are also keeping track of you know in which automata are we now looking for the final state? And the moment we see a final state, we say, okay, we have seen a final state in the run of this automaton. Now let's start looking for a final state in the run of the next automaton, right? So if, if this was a final state, let's say, if this was F1, then the moment I see this, I say, okay, now I have already seen a final state in automaton one. Now let me start looking at automaton two. And then again, when automaton two, you know, maybe in the next state of automaton two, it didn't have a final state. Maybe the next state was here and that was maybe T1, T2, T3 and uh, T2 was not a final state. Right? So in that case, we'll say, okay, we are still continuing to watch automaton 2 because we haven't seen it uh, hit a final state after we started looking, you know, here is the point where we started looking at automaton 2 and we have still not uh, seen a final state because T2 is maybe not final, right? And again, at some point of time, if I see a final state of, of the second automaton, I'll then change, you know, just like this went from 1 to 2, I'll then go from 2 to 3, right? And similarly, when I see uh, an automaton, uh, a final state of automaton 3, I'll again switch back from 3 to 1. So this last component of this tuple in the state is just telling us which automaton are we now keeping track of as far as checking whether it has reached a final state is concerned. So if we are tracking automaton one, and if we have not seen a final state, we keep that number stays at one because we're still tracking automaton one to see if it has hit a final state. The moment automaton one hits the final state, we say, okay, now we're going to start tracking automaton two. And until automaton two sees a final state, that uh, number will stay at two. And then once automaton two sees a final state, we will say, okay, now we'll start tracking automaton three, where it is hit a final state and so on and so forth. So you see that in this case, what happens is if you really had a infinite word that was accepted by all the three automata, then you will hit, you know, you'll start off with maybe tracking automaton one 
and then when you hit the final state of automaton 1 that number becomes 2 and then after some time when automaton 2 hits its final state that number becomes 3 and after some time when automaton 3 hits its final state that number becomes 1 again and again it becomes 2 and again it becomes 3 and so on so this last component will keep cycling between 1 and 2 and 3 if this infinite sequence was indeed accepted by all the three automata on the other hand if for one of the automata after some number of steps it no longer sees a final state then when it finally reaches when i'm finally trying to track that automaton i'll finally get stuck there it will not you know maybe it goes 1 2 3 1 2 3 and then it just stays as 1 2 and it just keeps staying at 2 because 2 is no longer seeing a final state so that component cannot change from 2 to 3 clear is is this construction clear can i get some responses yes yeah? yes so this is really the product construction that we have for finite words except this last component and this actually does something very uh, remarkable this last component because now i'll say that my final component my final states will be uh, any state from uh, you know in any state from uh, a1 any state from a2 and maybe i'll say final state from uh, 3 and 3 right when would i hit such a state infinitely often you know if i am hitting a final state of 3 and the number 3 infinitely often what what does this mean that i was tracking automaton 3 and i saw a final state of 3 now we know from our construction that the moment this happens that i was tracking automaton 3 and i saw a final state of 3 this number we know is next going to change to 1 immediately but if i'm going to hit this state infinitely often it means that from that one it again came back to 3 a final state and then 3 right which means that it saw a final state of 1 then it saw a final state of 2 and then it finally is seeing a final state of 3 and after this it immediately changes to 1 again and if the state is being hit infinitely often it means that from that one it will again come back here right so you see that if i'm going to see this state infinitely often right then it means that i'm actually cycling between 1 2 and 3 infinitely often because i know that immediately after this state it will become 1 and then if i'm seeing this state infinitely often from that one i have to come back to this 3 so it must see a final state of automaton 1 go to 2 Then it might see a final, must see a final state of automaton two, go to three, and then again from here it will go go back to one, and so. On. Right. So if I hit such final states, which are any state of a one, any state of a two, one, some final state of a three and three, and I construct all such final final states, you know, using all the final states of uh, automaton three, and the this this comp last component being three, uh, then I know that if any one of these final states is being hit infinitely often then uh, the automaton is actually causing each of these uh, individual component automata to hit its final state infinitely often and that exactly means that this language is in the intersection of those three languages okay so you see that once i get these three automata it's actually not very hard to get so for example in this case each one of them has two states so the total number of states i'll get here is 2 into 2 into 2 that's 8 into 3 because i will have this third this fourth component here also so in 24 states i can actually get an automaton like this but it will be a non deterministic in general it will be a non deterministic booky automata because in general each of these are themselves non deterministic booky automata but in this particular case that we are looking at because each of these were deterministic booky automata the product will also be deterministic and because of the way you are moving from 1 to 2 and 2 to 3 and 3 to 1 that is also deterministic therefore this entire product will be deterministic in this case so you know i want to emphasize that when we are looking at one ltl formula like what we had over here uh, right one ltl formula uh, i could try to take this one ltl formula and try to construct a booky automaton out of it and uh, it can get complicated uh, but if i look at the individual parts of the formula uh, and if i sort of am able to obtain individual automata for those and then if i try to combine them then it can be much much simpler 
okay and uh, you know this this i think this compositional way this modular way of doing it is key to scaling up in this whole thing and of course i have considered uh, and here but if i had or it would just have been the union of the two automata the union works uh, you know just like the union works for finite words because you are basically saying that non deterministically you are going to choose one of these two initial states and then you are just going to follow that that corresponding automaton right union means it's either accepted by one automaton or the other automaton so you non deterministically choose one of the initial states and then you just keep following the the states of that automaton the transitions of that automaton which you have chosen so conjunction uh, of formulas disjunction of formulas are fairly easy to take care of once you have built bookie automata for the individual formulas in general we'll get non deterministic bookie but in this particular case we were lucky we got a deterministic bookie what i want to show you uh, so uh, you know basically uh, in the interests of time what i will do is i'll first try to go through the rest of it and then i'll I, i'll try to uh, see if we have time we can try to understand how to go from a general ltl formula to a corresponding non deterministic bookie automata i mean here of course i took some special simple formulas and we could see what the automata are but how do we do this in general maybe we'll come back a little later if there's time but uh, before we uh, go there i do want to share with you a particular tool that is available uh, which uh, allows you to go from ltl formula to non deterministic bookie automata using uh, you know a lot of machinery in between and i just want to show this to you so that you know that this is a fairly standard thing what we are talking about given an ltl formula phi it can be converted to non deterministic bookie automata so uh let's just see uh i will have to share my screen give me a second so uh oh it's right here okay so right um yeah can you see the screen this website yes. ltl to ba is this visible uh yes sir it's visible yeah so uh, this is ltl to bookie automata uh, and uh, of course this uses much more sophisticated techniques than what we have been talking about but this is just to show that you know we can do this there is nothing uh, nothing very difficult about it and it's sort of already implemented in tools uh, so i mean you can forget about the spin syntax and all of that so what we will do is uh, we will say okay please display an image of the bookie automaton uh um, maybe we don't need this and uh, enable some simplifications of course uh and let us see what happens okay so we will try to plug in our formula itself and we'll see what comes out so this was our first formula right g x1 implies this is how they write implies for this tool there is some um uh, is written uh, okay uh yeah this the, this was written somewhere that this is how the right implies a dash followed by the greater than sign so let's see what comes out if i say uh, please convert this so so here is what you get your automaton and you see that this looks a bit similar to our automata but it's also a bit different right remember our automaton what we had was we had that if there was an x1 we were coming here and then we were waiting here until the y1 happened and if the y1 happened we were going back here whereas here they are saying this one basically means anything it means true so it says that at any point of time you can come here at any point of time you can choose to take this transition and if y1 comes you can also go here so you see the difference between the deterministic automata that we had created and this automaton that has been created over here which is a non deterministic automaton because if y1 comes you have the option 
of looping back here or you have the option of going here similarly here it's saying if either negation x1 comes or y1 comes i can loop back here but i can also come here and if in any case if none of these come then i must come here right which means that if either x1 has happened if x1 has happened and not y1 has happened then i should come here right that is exactly what we were tracking in our deterministic automaton and then if y1 has happened we go back there but here it also non deterministically allows you to stay here so is this non deterministic automaton doing the same thing that our deterministic automaton was doing yes it is because for a non deterministic automaton we say a word or a sequence is recognized by the non deterministic automaton if there is at least one accepting run right so in this particular case if i give you x1 followed by y1 and again x1 followed by y1 uh you can you know whenever you have x1 and negation y1 you have to come here and then whenever you see y1 you are free to come back here right so you can keep moving around this infinitely often if you get a sequence of x1s and then y1s and then x1s and then y1s and so this word is indeed accepted because uh, this infinite sequence is accepted because this is the final state now what if i give you a sequence that should not be accepted let us say x1 and after that no y1s what happens in this case so you you get x1 and no y1s right so no y1s at all but there's initially there was one x1 so because initially you have x1 but no y1 you can't take this so you come here and subsequently since you didn't see any y1 you can't take this transition back you are stuck here so you will basically be moving around this forever which means that you will not be hitting the final state infinitely often which means that word won't be accepted right so this non deterministic cookie automaton is actually doing the same stuff that our deterministic automaton was doing we also had two states they also have this one also has two states but this is non deterministic what we had was deterministic and of course in this case we can construct a deterministic automaton uh, that does the same thing as the non deterministic automaton in general for bookey automata it cannot be done okay. so okay uh, this is you know two states we got now let us see if i want to add my next thing so i already have it over here and let's see if i ask this to be converted then what comes out so you see that well it's kind of you know much more complicated but you can sort of see the two automata for these two formulas hiding somewhere here right so remember i talked about i can construct one automaton for this i can construct one automaton for this and then i can keep cycling between these two automata right in the product construction so here they have you can sort of see that one of those automata is here right on y1 it goes back the other automata is here on y2 it goes back and then that you know the product construction and the cycling back that gives rise to all of this other complication but now it is starting to look a bit complicated and uh, you know per perhaps we can still see the two the automata for the two formulas somewhere here but if i try to look at it you know in its entirety then uh, it looks a bit complicated what about uh, if i now add uh, oh so so what we can do is uh, we can just see how the this this looks like just the not y1 or so or this specify like this or not y2 so how does this automaton look like this was also a two state deterministic automata for us here it's just a one state non deterministic automaton right it's saying that okay if you get not y1 or not y2 you are allowed to transition if you don't see any one of these you are not allowed to transition you are stuck there right so if after some point of time you neither see not y1 nor not y2 then you're just stuck in the state you can't take a transition and so you're not visiting the state infinitely often okay so this is kind of simpler uh, but of course this is non deterministic and now what we want to do is we uh, we want to just put the whole thing together so let's see yeah uh, right so i have done this here right so we have the first thing and the second thing and the third thing and the first thing and the second thing was already getting a bit scary now let's see what happens if i put in the third thing and as you can see you know things get done oh what happened 
So there it is, okay. And this is the automaton. I should try to see. Yeah. Is my screen still visible? Can you see the automaton? Yes, sir. Right. So you see that well. Okay, it's it's not too bad. It has six states, uh, but the transition structure is starting to get more and more complicated. But nevertheless, we have an automaton that represents exactly the same sequence of states as uh, the formula that we have written. And of course, we can keep writing any formula here. I mean, in this online tool, they they have a time limit of two hours and a memory limit of one GB. Uh, but uh, we could so, for example, you know, I mean, here is the automaton. Just have a look at it, and then if I just make some small changes here. So, for example, maybe I I make this also as y one, and right. So x one implies f y one, and x two also implies f y one. So this is not the arbiter, but you know some changed uh, specification, and you see that suddenly the thing just collapses, right? So small changes here can make big changes here, right? And uh, and this is to be expected because you know we are basically saying that we are looking at sequences that satisfy this formula the moment i made a small change here of course the set of sequences has changed significantly because it's the intersection of things and the new set of sequences is just obtainable like this right if i introduce maybe an or over here um, that will change even further right so this is very very dependent on what formula you given over there is this clear yes okay yes. so uh, i mean you you can uh, sort of note this side down i mean ltl to ba in your google search it also comes up this is a fairly well known tool uh, and it's quite fast as you can see that you know at least for small examples that we are doing it's hardly taking any time it's doing a lot of simplification and also printing out the automaton and all of that okay now uh, let's get back to where we were Is the screen visible now? Yes, sir. It's yes, sir. Okay, great. So, you know, so while I have not exactly told you how to go from an arbitrary LTL formula to a Buki automaton, deterministic or non-deterministic, uh, I hope you are convinced at this point that this is a done deal. I mean, this can be done, and we even have tools to do this for us, right? And in this particular case, uh, we we have just um, the the hand constructed ones that we used are all deterministic Buki automata, and the intersection will therefore also be deterministic. So now the question is that uh, you know, in general, I am going to get non-deterministic Buki automata when I take their intersection of non-deterministic Buki automata. It's just a product construction. So, if any one of them had non-determinism, the product will also have non-determinism. So, the question is that uh, why why is it not? Uh, I mean, wh why do we want to? You know, remember our next step in this thing. If you remember the picture, was to go into a deterministic parity automaton. Let's forget about the parity for the time being. So, why do we need to go to a deterministic automaton? Why why can't we just work with a non-deterministic automaton? One of those big automata that I just showed you. Uh, why is it not good enough for our purposes? I mean, remember our purpose was to say that uh, you know, if uh, there is if there is a way to realize the system, if there is a way to synthesize the system, we should be able to synthesize it. Correct. Right? So 
you know, with the non-deterministic automata, what happens? So, okay, maybe before that, I should tell you what the overall strategy now is. Now that we have been able to convert our specification to an automaton, non-deterministic nonetheless, uh, how, how do we plan to use this automaton to actually get our final synthesis result? And, you know, that itself will tell you that non-determinism is bad there. We need to get into determinism. Okay. So, towards that end, uh, let's... Yeah. So, let's... Uh, let's see how we plan to use these automata. So, once again, you know, we can go back to the uh, automata that we just saw for our specification, six state or seven state, whatever. Uh, but I just want to give the high level idea of how do we plan to use an automaton for you know, synthesizing our stuff. So for that purpose, I will once again choose our little automaton, our little automaton, which we understand a little bit because that itself will kind of illustrate what's going on. How do we plan to use it? Okay, so this is a deterministic automaton. And I want to start with the deterministic automaton because then it becomes much simpler to see how to solve the synthesis problem. Okay. And this was, let us say, G of X1 implies FY1. And let's say that, you know, for the time being, we are just not worried about X2 and Y2 at all. So I'm just going to represent the states as values of X1 and Y1. So this is saying one zero, x one has come, y one has not come. This is saying one one or zero zero or zero one. And this is saying uh, one one or zero one. And this is saying uh, zero zero or one zero. Does everybody understand what I'm talking about over here? Does anybody not understand? Please unmute yourself and let me know because it's very important that we understand what this diagram means in order to figure out how we're going to synthesize uh, a system that satisfies this specification, this little specification. Does everybody understand what diagram I have drawn here, what the labels on the edges mean? Okay, uh, let me check this. Uh, okay, I presume that silence means that everybody understands. Uh, and I mean, this is the same thing that I've been trying to harp on since before lunch. Uh, but now I want to show you something very interesting that's happening over here. So let me call this as state uh, A, maybe, and this is state B. Okay. So now you look at the labels on the edges, right? These labels have a value of the input and also a value of the output. Remember the input is generated by the environment, the output is generated by the system. Okay, But these transitions, but the LTL formula was on both the inputs and outputs, which is why our bookie automaton has the transitions labeled by both inputs and outputs. Right? So in fact, you know, using the notation that we had used in the morning, where the inputs were marked with blue, so maybe I should say 0, 1, 1, 1, and 0, 0, and this is 1, 0. Oops, sorry. Uh, yeah, this is 1, 1, 0. And these are in blue. Okay. So this should make it clear that when I'm talking about a transition in this automaton, I'm actually talking about an input from the environment and an output from the system, looking at both their values and then having this transition. This is the current input, current output, 
transition current input current output transition current input current output transition right that's the way this is working so you know as far as the specification is concerned the specification talks about the inputs and the outputs in the same way because they are just variables in the specification right this is a variable which is an input this is another variable which is an output they could have been flipped around whatever it doesn't matter for the input the the two variables are just two variables there is no special meaning between them so for the automaton also these two variables the valuations of these two variables are just valuations it doesn't matter which is what but for our purpose of course i mean that is the entire <laughs> problem about right i mean we are trying to synthesize a system here which will take x as input and it will give y as output if you just flip it around and say that well okay maybe it should take y as input and x as output my system is going to be completely different looking right so for us it matters a lot about what is the input and what is the output but for the specification and hence for this automaton it does not matter they are just saying okay this was the input value you if if this is the input and output value i saw at the current time then this is how i'll move if that's the input and output value i saw at the current time this is how i'll move and so on. but for us of course it makes a lot of difference so what we're going to do is we are going to take this diagram this automaton diagram itself and we are going to split it into things happening on the input and things happening on the output okay and this split has to be done a bit carefully so let us try to do this thing so out a little bit yeah it's readable right is it still readable or has it become too small it's readable readable okay great so what i want to do is the following i want to say okay i'll start here this is the state a that i have and then let us say the environment is going to act first so first there will be a blue value that will come okay now the blue value that will come could be either a zero or it could be a one right and what we see here is that just looking at the blue value i can't figure out whether i should be going here or whether i should be staying here well if the blue value was zero i know that i should be staying here but uh, if the blue value was 1 i don't really know i mean depending on what the red value is i could be staying here or i could be going here. so what we will do is we'll actually separate this out we will say that okay let's talk about you know i'm going to draw and think of these as states uh but i'm going to draw these as squares so i'll say that okay from a i could have come here uh with a blue value of 1 right and then depending on whether the red value is 1 in which case i'll go back here right so that corresponds to this 1 1 over here blue value 1 red value 1 i'll go back there but if the red value happens to be zero then i'll go to my other state b okay and what happens if i have zero if i get the blue value as zero see then regardless of what you know what red value comes i have to come back to a so maybe i'll just use another uh, green box here to say that okay if i get a blue value of 0 uh, then you go there and then depend regardless of what red value gets output i'm going to come back here okay now once i'm in state b i can do a similar thing right so you can do this like it's smaller once i'm in sorry once i'm in state b i can start to do a similar thing 
so i can say okay now i you know once again a blue value might come it could be zero or one but that doesn't tell me exactly what happens because it depends on the red value as well so fine i will create uh, so so i'll see you know maybe what happens so if a blue value of zero comes and then if uh, i get a zero i should stay back in b and if i get a one i should go back to a right so starting from here if a blue value of zero comes then if i get a zero i should stay back at b if i get a red value of 1 i should go back to a but that looks like exactly what this guy was doing right getting a zero go back to b getting a one going back to a so in fact i can put my blue value of zero back here is this clear because from b if i get a blue value of zero then after that if i get a red value of 1 i come back to a and if i get a red value of 0 i come back to b and what about the other one if i get a blue value of 1 then you know depending on whether i get a red value of 0 or i get a red value of 1 i either come to i'd stay at b or go to 1 so i'll introduce one more box over here let's say okay from b when i see a 1 on blue right then if i see a one further on red then i'm going to come back here and if i see a zero on red i'm going to go back there is this transformation clear to everybody this is of course a deterministic automaton i have started off with a deterministic automaton and i have drawn another graph like structure where the states of that automaton are still there but along each transition i had both an input and an output labeled together in the automaton but i know for our purposes for synthesis purposes an input has to come and then an output has to be generated so i'm sort of separating it out i'm saying okay if an input comes and then depending on what the output comes i can go either here or there but effectively i am just mimicking this automaton but now i have separated out the inputs and the outputs right starting from here first the input must happen then the output must happen then again another input can happen then again another output can happen so we are just saying that we have sort of sequenced saying okay we'll look at the input and then generate the output can't is this construction talk? yeah the top state and the bottom green state can be merged into one right can they be i don't know maybe uh, maybe not oh yes you are right coming zero coming one excellent thank you yeah so whether it is zero or one we go there right thank you very much okay excellent so uh if this construction is clear hello yeah go ahead um, like why are we making these boxes like i didn't understand why like no, no, no i mean okay so i'm coming to that but the first reason we are making these boxes is because this guy this automaton here makes no difference between what comes first and what comes next it just says i have seen a 1 0 1 from the input and 0 from the, 1 on blue and 0 from red but was this like 0 uh, was the input coming first and then in response 1 was being generated or was this 1 coming first and then 0 was getting generated so this automaton makes no distinction this ltl formula makes no distinction right because ltl formula is on both sets of variables so the, both the inputs and the outputs are just variables in the ltl formula a propositions in the ltl formula right and because they are just propositions in the ltl formula they don't enjoy any uh, i mean there's nothing special about blue or about red in the ltl formula 
Therefore, the automaton, which is just trying to you know represent the same sequence of states as the LPL formula, also doesn't make any distinction. But for our purposes, we do need to make a distinction. We need to say, I mean, we don't want to generate an output without looking at the input, right? So we do want to say that, well, you know, I will look at an input and then I'll generate an output, and that is the separation that has been done here, saying that from state A, really I expect an input to come first. and then some output can get generated the output can get generated one or can get generated zero so i'm not taking away the information that was there in this uh, in this automaton but i'm saying that this at least has that ordering you know if you start looking at it it's clear who goes first if this is your starting state or this is your starting position it's clearly a blue must go first there is there is no red out of this and once the blue goes then only there are reds out of it only the red can go and once the red goes only a blue can go so it's sort of telling you in what sequence things are going to happen while still ensuring that whatever this automaton was representing is still being represented and for example you can still call this uh, uh, an accepting state okay i i think i got it now thank you okay, right because if i had flipped this if i had said y1 was the input and x1 was the output i would put the reds coming into these square boxes Because first the inputs must happen and then the outputs must happen. So this graph structure that I have drawn here, this is also called a game graph, or you know it's also called a game arena. And where is this game business coming here? So game arena. what is the game business here the game business here is that you can now think of this structure as representing a game between the circle player and the square player so there are two players circle player square player circle player is the environment the square player is the system so it's a game that is happening in which the environment first makes a move and then the system makes a move and then again the environment makes a move and the system makes a move and this is how things go on so basically at any point of time you're either in a circle vertex or in a square vertex if you're in a square vertex it's time for the system to make a move if you're in a circle vertex it's time for the environment to make a move and when do we say that the system wins right remember our goal was to implement this specification the entire objective of what we are doing is to come up with a system that satisfies that that make sure that this specification is satisfied no matter what the environment does right so we will say that the system wins the specification if you have to end up visiting this state infinitely often you have to end up visiting this thing infinitely often right because this is coming from the automaton correct okay? and if the system if the environment can force you to behave in a way such that you can't visit this infinitely often then it's the environment that wins and the system that loses so as an example suppose uh you know suppose so so it's like a turn based game so there is an environment player and there is a system player the environment player is going to produce the xs blue xs and the system in response will give you the red ys and what is the system trying to do the system is always trying to come back to this because this guy has to be visited infinitely often and what is the environment trying to do the environment is always trying to take it away from here okay so in this case what you can see is that suppose you know just let's let's have a sample run of it so suppose the environment first gives a zero okay so we are here and now the system's goal is to come back to this place and the system says okay i don't care i can generate whatever i'll always come back okay. 
and then the environment says oh, okay you know if i give a zero you know the system doesn't even care it always comes back so maybe i should give a one and the system says okay i have received a one now if i output a zero i am actually moving away from here but if i output a one and coming back here but it's it might still be okay to output a zero but you know maybe i'll prefer to output a one so let us say the system chooses to output a one so that you know it's back to safety again and then you know the environment says oh okay you know i mean one this also came back so maybe it gives another one and maybe this time the system says okay fine i tried this earlier let me try this and so let's say the system gives a zero now it has moved away from there now the environment says that aha uh -huh, you know i mean i have brought in it away from here so let me give you know some other input maybe i give a zero but then it comes back here now it's for the system to decide whether it wants to go back here and stay away from there or it wants to do this for some time or it wants to come back here so if it wants to come back here it now puts a one and it's again back to safety right so you see that this is like a game in which there are these two players the environment player's objective is to keep the system away from the final states the system player's objective is to come back to the final state infinitely many times no matter what the environment does and all that we need to do now is to to sort of figure out what should be the system strategy in each of these square boxes so for example you know in this particular case we could say okay the system strategy should be if you are in this box output 1 and if you are in this box you can output whatever you like it doesn't matter okay so then the the strategy for the system to win is to say okay first figure out which box you are coming to okay are you in this box or are you in this box so of course that depends on you know which where was the environment playing from and what did the environment play but if you are in this box then you output a one if you are in this box then you can output whatever you want okay so the the system's winning strategy the winning strategy for the system would be to say that whenever i am in you know so whenever i am in this uh whenever i am in this uh, green box with red shading inside then if somehow the environment has brought me to this state then i am going to output y1 is 1 and in the other case i don't care so i can output whatever i can choose 0 or 1 or whatever so this could be a winning strategy for the system what what does it mean to say that this is a winning strategy it means that in this game graph in this game arena whenever it is time for the system to play something whenever it's time for the system to take its turn it just looks up this strategy and it says okay where am i and what do i need to do and it just takes that step right and if such a winning strategy exists for the system i mean this is a particularly easy case where you can see the you know in general the move that the system takes may not immediately take back to an accepting state but may take back to some state from where you can then come to an accepting state in the next move so in general the winning strategy tells what the system should do after the environment has driven it into a certain you know into one of these boxes is this at least making sense at a slightly high level that the whole point of going from the ltl formula to the automaton in this approach was to use the automaton to build a game graph and in the game graph at each of the square boxes at each of the vertices in the game graph that corresponds to the system i want to come up with a strategy what should i do what should i output if i am in that box right and of course what i should try to output should help me to sort of visit the final states and final clear for
is this uh, making a little bit of sense oh, yes sir yeah yes sir yes yes yeah. okay great so this is why we want to we wanted to get from the ltl formula to an automaton because from the automaton we'll get to the graph and then you know actually this graph is now going to tell us uh, a lot of things now right i mean you see that uh, you know you can think of uh, each of these things right each of these states that are coming from the original uh, automaton as some hidden state inside a milling machine so you, you call the state as state a and you call the state as state b and then this is actually telling you uh, you know your winning strategy basically gets converted to a finite state machine description saying that okay your finite state machine is now going to have two states sa and sb and when you are in state a state sa if you see the input one right so it is like we we usually write out our finite state machines like this right uh, so we say that there is current state input and then we generate the output we should say input that is x1 and then we generate the output and we generate the next state this is how we specify finite state machines right and we are going to see what what it means to have the strategy as a finite state machine so it's really simple now because now we are saying that okay when i am in sa and the input happens to come as 1 or whatever input happens to come at uh, come as 0 so when i am in state a the input happens to come as 0 i don't care what output i generate i can generate anything i want uh, but the next state must be sa back itself right and when i am in sa and the input comes as 1 then i must generate a 1 because that is my winning strategy so i must generate a 1 and that will bring me back to sa right and then uh, when i am in sb when i am in sb and i get either 0 or 1 right i should output a 1 and go to state a right when i am in state sb if for some reason i get into state sb and i get a 0 or 1 as the input then i should output a 1 and get into state a right so i get whatever is input then i should output a 1 and come back to state a right so this is the milli machine right so so now you can see that there are two states so you can really synthesize it using one state bit and you know let us say at state bit uh, a means uh, so sa means the state bit is 0 and maybe sb means the state bit is 1 so we now have a complete truth table right so what is our uh, what is uh, you know how how do we synthesize y1 as a function of this current state and uh, x1 right y1 as a function of current state and x1 so you can see that uh, 0 0 it is uh, it can be whatever 0 1 uh, it has to be 1 and 1 whatever it has to be 1 so maybe a good way of you know implementing this a simple way of implementing this is to just set it to 1 right because that satisfies all the combinations 0 0 it is 1 0 1 it is 1 and 1 whatever it is 1 and a good way of implementing the next state is to just set it to 0 so you see that this does not even require a state bit any further because if it is just state is always 0 output is always 1 you go back and you ask 
that does this really satisfy the specification and you see that it actually satisfies the specification right if the output is always set to 1 it doesn't matter what input you give the output will actually always set to 1 or always come to 1 i mean uh, the output eventually becomes 1 and the specification sets right so it looks like you know i mean a very trivial case of a synthesis that we did but we need not have set this to that whenever i am in system or whenever i am in sys i need to automatically immediately come to one i need not have done this and i could have said okay i'll circle through this one more time and then i'll come back to one right? so i'll go here and then i'll come here and so i'll remember how many times i've come from here and then from this. so it's all just in the milli machine now it all just depends on you know how much state i'm tracking here here i didn't want to track any state i just said if i'm here and here then i go back there right if i'm here i here i immediately go back here but i could have come up with another strategy which says okay if you're here here you go here visit this for one time and then of course when you're here and here then you can come back here so i mean an alternative implementation could have been that if from state a you are getting one you go to state b this could have been an alternative implementation right from state a you get a one you uh, output a zero and you go to state b this would also be a perfectly valid implementation right from state a on getting a one you output a zero and go to state b and from state b whatever you get you output a one and come to state a okay in this case you have a different winning strategy i mean you will still win because you know when you go from here and here and then you come back here you're still going to end up visiting this final state but this is a different winning strategy and this winning strategy might look you know slightly more non trivial than this but it it's going to satisfy the same specification right so what does this winning strategy look like it says that well uh when uh maybe when x1 is true and s0 is uh, and the state bit is 0 then you should set the output bit to 0 actually yeah maybe one simple way of doing this is to just say y1 is equal to uh the state bit right so this is when the state bit is 0 and state bit is 1 denoting states a and b right so i could say that y1 just follows the state bit so whenever it is 0 it is 0 0 0 1 1 and what does the next state do the next state if it is 0 then this is 0 but if it is 0 and 1 then it goes to 1 and if it is 1 then it definitely goes to 0 so this next state bit uh, next state logic has to be defined appropriately so you can say the next state the, the next value of the state s prime let us say should be it should be 1 when uh, s is true and uh, x1 is true otherwise it should always be zero. so this gives you a little state machine a finite state machine uh which looks like this right it has kind of one flip flop so to say which is keeping track of the state and then uh the output y1 is just the so this is s and this is s prime next state and the output y1 is coming straight from here so that is y1 and the input x1 the input x1 is added with the state is added with the state to give you s prime so this would be a system that takes x as input generates y as output and satisfies this specification remember that was our goal take x as input generate y as output we may or may not need state bits hidden state bits here i have we have implemented something with one hidden state bit earlier we showed you that just setting y1 to 1 is also going to implement another winning strategy which does not require any state bits doesn't even look at the input but this one is you know kind of interesting because it's saying that well okay uh if you set x uh if, if if you if initially if you set x1 x to 1 then it doesn't immediately output 
a one on y but it kind of outputs it one step later because it goes to state one and in state one it then outputs one and then it again comes back to this right so so this is yet another implementation and you could come up with all kinds of implementation right so you know uh, yeah so I, i guess what we are talking about is from the ltl5 we got an nba and really we didn't take the nba we took some deterministic version of it i mean the 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 automaton that we talked about here was a deterministic automaton but if if i can get a deterministic automaton from there i can construct a game and from this game i can get a winning strategy for the system and from this winning strategy i can get a milli machine or move machine or whatever and that is finally the system that you want to synthesize for this specification okay so the so of course you know in the interests of time i have i have just shown you a very simple illustration but hopefully this illustration tells you uh, that if i get a deterministic automaton actually i'm done right because i'll just take this deterministic automaton i'll construct this game graph and then i'll just figure out my strategy what to do from this game graph of course you know figuring out the strategy what to do from the game graph this was a very very simple game graph and so here it was quite clear so in general it may be difficult and i'm going to cover that very briefly uh that it's actually possible to figure out what you should be doing at every state if you are to win the game and remember there was a question right uh, towards the beginning of today's uh, tutorial in the morning that can we figure out if a system is unrealizable right and that's exactly the case where you see that there is no winning strategy for the system i mean no matter what the system does the environment can beat it so you can actually analyze this graph and i'm going to talk about it briefly to figure out whether there is a winning strategy or whether the, for the system or there is no winning strategy if there is no winning strategy that said the system is unrealizable if there is a winning strategy you then just you know extract the winning strategy as a table like this saying when i am in this state what are these states these are states of the automata when i am in this state i get some input then what state should i go to what output should i produce our nba is uh, decidable if it is deterministic then we can treat them as dfs right directly but if are, are what decidable so initially we construct the non deterministic but the automaton right Correct. so is so we so you said that we can figure out whether the uh, given ltl is realizable or not by looking if there is any winning strategy but yes. if for a general nba if the this that decision is undecidable then we cannot tell right whether we will be able to find a strategy or not no no so it's so what is undecidable i mean everything about nba is decidable we can say whether it is uh, empty whether you know it has a universal language whatever so but the point is i can't use this nba to directly come up with this game graph and why is that because uh in an nba from the same state on the same input i can have multiple transitions going out right now in the game graph if i have this situation remember this game graph is derived from the automaton so if in the game graph i have this situation that from the same state on the same input i can go to two different boxes and then from one of these boxes maybe i can actually win the game and from the other box i can't win the game how do i you know i mean when i'm constructing my milli machine what do i do when i'm in this state and when i'm getting the input which of these other two places should i go to right so in particular what might happen is that you may end up choosing something particularly if this game graph becomes large you may end up choosing something for which uh, there is you know that because of the choice there is no further winning strategy beyond that choice although there was a winning strategy in the original game graph right so we want to completely avoid that business <laughs> we want to say that because a non deterministic automaton has this i mean this is this is the uh, this is the reason why non deterministic automata can be so much more succinct than deterministic automata is that 
uh, they can allow multiple runs on the same word. Whereas a deterministic automaton will allow exactly one run on a word, infinite or finite, whatever. Right? Now, in a non-deterministic automaton, I'm running a word, and if I have multiple runs, any one of those runs accepting gives me acceptance for the automaton. But how do I know a priori which of those runs are going to be accepted? Right? We don't know. And therefore, if there are multiple ways from, from a given state, from a given state on the same input, if there are multiple places I can, multiple squares I can go to, then how do I know which one of these squares? I mean, I have to choose one of them and then proceed further, right? And then ask, okay, now that I have chosen this, what is the move that I should make from here? But, you know, if we are saying that, I mean, really, you know, I mean, I have to finally get a mealy machine, right? So I have to finally say that when I'm in state SA and the X1 is zero, what should the next state be? Correct? Now, if there are multiple possibilities for the next state, because there are multiple boxes I can go to, and from each of these boxes, there are different red arrows that can come out and go to different state. So then, you know, from the same state on the same input, I have to go to only one next state. I can't go to multiple next states. The Mealy machine has to be deterministic at the end of the day. The, the, finite, the finite state system that you're designing, the system that you're designing has to be deterministic, right? So you're in a particular state and you receive a particular input, you have to go to a unique next state. Now, if there are multiple possibilities for you to go and for each one of them, then there are multiple ways to generate outputs and go to other next states, uh, then you, you can't capture that in this machine here. You have to choose one, right? And what if you end up choosing one which actually blocks further winning strategy for you, whereas there was a winning strategy if you had made another choice earlier? Okay. So therefore, what we want is we don't want this non-determinism over here. I can't come from this non-deterministic thing to this game. So I will have to determinize it. And if we are lucky and if we get deterministic bookie automata, just like what we have got right now, uh, you know, I mean, each of these were deterministic. So their product intersection will also be deterministic. Then we are doing extremely fine. We can just draw the game graph straight from there. We don't need to do this extra step of determinizing a non-deterministic bookie automata. But in general, I'll have a non-deterministic bookie automata and I have to do some kind of determ determinization. But we have already seen that not all non-deterministic bookie automata can be determinized. Right? This was an example, finitely many X ones. There's a non-deterministic bookie automata which accepts it. There are no deterministic bookie automata which accepts it. So therefore, if I'm going to talk about determinization, I have to change the acceptance condition. So I have to still talk about accepting infinite sequences, infinite words. But in a bookie automaton, we had said that a final state should get visited infinitely often. At least one final state should get visited infinitely often. Here, we have to come up with a different criterion such that we can still talk about infinite words and their acceptance. And we can also talk about deterministic automata. And this property, this acceptance property that is usually used is called a parity acceptance. So these are called deterministic parity automata. Okay? And the parity acceptance is actually, uh, you know, very, sim very uh, uh, similar to what we are saying for deterministic bookie, for, uh, bookie automata, except that it is formulated in a different way. So this is what uh, parity acceptance means. Right? So it says that you have an automaton. So actually, let's take the same automaton that we have been talking about, and let's convert it to a parity automaton. Okay? So remember, our automaton was this, and then there was some transition here, some transition here, some transition here, some transition here. Right? And this was our uh, accepting state here. Right? So if I look at this automaton and say that I want to view it as a bookie automaton, then I will have to make sure that for a string to be accepted, it has to keep visiting the state infinitely often. So with a parity acceptance condition, what we do is with each state, we associate 
a number which is sometimes called the parity or called the color uh, actually it's called a color okay so with each state we associate a number so for example we usually start these numbers from so we call these colors and we should start this from 0 1 2 and so on so with each state we associate a number two different states can get associated with the same number it's like coloring the states so for example i could say that the state is associated with number 0 and then the state is associated with number 1 or maybe the state is associated with number 3 doesn't matter it, it doesn't even have to be uh, i mean one can show that you don't need to put gaps in the numbers but you, i mean there's no restriction you can put different numbers the numbers don't even have to be constructed and then what we say is that if you look at any run of the system it will be going through these states right each state has a corresponding number denoting its color associated with it so if you look at a run of the automaton you'll get a sequence of states right maybe this is let's call it state a and state b so maybe i'm getting a sequence like a b b b a a something right so this will give rise to a sequence of colors so it will be 0 and then 3 by colors i mean these numbers they these numbers are just you know symbolic representations of the colors so so it will be like this right so you you get a sequence of states that corresponds to a sequence of these colors a sequence of these numbers associated with the states and as i said two different states can have the same number so this is not really the same as this for example i could have another state also which is colored 3 and another state also which is colored 0 so by looking at the sequence of colors you may not be able to figure out what the sequence of states is so the sequence of colors is not in general the same as the sequence of states the parity acceptance condition says that okay you take a word sigma run it on this automaton get the sequence of states that gives rise to a sequence of these numbers and then you find out <coughs> what is the smallest number that is repeating infinitely often remember this is an infinite sequence of states and there are only finitely many states in this automaton so there will be only finitely many numbers over here so if there is an infinite sequence and only finitely many numbers are being used here at least one number must repeat infinitely often so we find out all the numbers that repeat infinitely often and we find out the smallest number the smallest color that repeats infinitely often and if the smallest color uh is even then we say that the automaton has accepted the word if the smallest color is odd we say the automaton has rejected the word but of course you know we can flip it around and define acceptance by saying the smallest color is odd or the smallest color is even so that is where the parity comes in whether is it odd or even okay. so with each state we associate a color which is one of finite number of colors because the number of states is finite then as you run a word on this automaton you get a sequence of these colors and you find the smallest color that repeats infinitely often and you ask its parity whether it's odd or even and accordingly you decide so for example typically what we say is that the smallest parity should be even <coughs> for the word to be accepted and uh, if the smallest parity is odd then the word is not accepted right so you see that it still has the same kind of flavor as wiki acceptance I and mean, you're still talking about infinite words giving rise to infinite sequences of states but now instead of saying that well in this infinite sequence of states some finite state should repeat infinitely often some final state should repeat infinitely often we are saying look at the sequence of colors and then what is the smallest color that repeats infinitely often and is that even or is that odd so similar kind of flavor we are asking for something that repeats infinitely often in this case it's the smallest color in the other case it was some final state the interesting part is that you can take any non deterministic bookie automaton and you can mechanically convert it to a deterministic parity automaton 
So this automaton will be deterministic and its acceptance condition will be parity. Every non-deterministic Bukhi automaton can be converted to a deterministic parity automaton. In our case, you know, we had our final state here and we wanted this to be visited infinitely often. So we can just put the zero color here and then odd numbered colored here. And then saying that this state has to be visited infinitely often is the same as saying that the color zero will appear infinitely often. And of course, zero is the smallest color. So the smallest color that appears infinitely often uh, is zero. And any, any run that gets stuck here, the color that appears infinitely often will be three, that is odd. So by just assigning an even color to the uh, accepting states and uh, odd color to the non-accepting states, you can basically uh, sort of try to mimic. I mean, it's not exactly the same, but you can try to mimic because, you know, I mean, uh, you also have to make sure that it's the smallest color. For example, if I had put four over here, <laughs> that would not work, right? Because then uh, a run that goes like this, right, visits this state infinitely often, but the smallest color that repeats infinitely often would be three. And that is odd. And so that string would get thrown. Right. So we would like to put this, if it is two or if it is zero, then it is fine. Because even if it goes around this infinitely often, the smallest color that repeats infinitely often is two uh, and it is even. So that's the parity condition. And the, oh, I think I have overshot the break time. I'm sorry. Yeah. So I'll just stop here uh, by saying this much that. You know, that's the additional step that we need to go through. Start from a non-deterministic Bukhi automaton, convert it into a deterministic something so that we can draw a deterministic game graph and find a deterministic winning strategy. And this deterministic something is usually a deterministic parity automaton because finding winning strategies for parity automata are usually simpler. Uh, and after that, you get the millage, right? And here I have just shown you, uh, you know, something very rudimentary for this, I've shown you two milli machines. You know, if you consider these two formulas together, the milli machine for this will also be exactly similar to the milli machine for this, the roles of x1, x2, and y1, y2 are interchanged. Uh, so if your specification is these two formulas taken together, you can just take these two milli machines and put them side by side, and that will satisfy it. But when you put in this extra stuff over here, then you can't say, let me synthesize the milli machine for this, because this is also going to decide what y1 and y2 are, right? Here also y1 and y2 are the outputs. Here also y1 and y2 are the outputs. So in general, you can't synthesize each one of these separately and just put them side by side and say, hey, this is what it should be. In general, what you have to do is you have to draw the uh, deterministic parity automaton for this whole thing, right? Like we did this combined intersection that was, we had a deterministic Bukhi automaton, which can be converted to a deterministic parity automaton. And then from that, you get the overall game graph and the overall winning strategy. So in general, uh, you can do this only up to a certain point, doing it part by part. But then when the output start interfering, whatever output this produces is also the same as what this produces, then you have to take them together. So I'll stop here. Uh, if there are any questions, once again, I'm very sorry. I have overshot 40 minutes, uh, 10 minutes. I didn't notice that I had overshot. Uh, but we can start 10 minutes later if that helps. Uh, and uh, so what? maybe what I'll do immediately after the tea session is that uh, I will talk a little bit about how, in general, for a game graph obtained from a deterministic parity automaton, how you decide a winning strategy. I mean, here, this was staring at our face, so we didn't need to do much. But in general, we, we, we do need to run. It's an efficient algorithm, polynomial time algorithm, from a game graph to get the winning strategy. And from there, the milli machine is completely straightforward once we have the winning strategy. So that will at least complete the entire flow. And then uh, in the next session, uh, maybe I'll spend the first half an hour trying to explain this, how to get the winning strategy from a deterministic game graph. Uh, and uh, after that, we'll actually see a tool which is doing all of this. 
which is uh, actually going to give you the mealy machines uh, once you start off with an LTL formula. It will do all of these things uh, and give you the final output. Okay, so I'll stop there.